I have a image gallery here I want to look at with you. Most of this information you have in greater detail in your textbook, but I just wanted to point out a couple of the most important features of the Romanesque that you should be able to identify very uh, quickly. So the first thing you'll notice in Romanesque architecture is how heavy it is. Um, there are heavy and dark. We don't get a lot of light at the time. The, art, the uh, technology wasn't yet there so that walls could be made thin enough to have a lot of holes pierced in them for windows. So every time you, you put a hole in the wall in order to install a window, you were weakening the strength of that wall. So those giant buttresses and things that we'll see in Gothic architecture hadn't really been developed to their full capacity yet. So we see very heavy ceilings held up with lots and lots of columns. Um, and we see wind, uh, very, very thick architecture with very little light coming through. So any view of the front of the church um, would be often blocked by these columns holding up the roof. And it would be very dark because of the lack of lighting. Let's look at the outside of one of these um, churches. So we have here uh, another feature of, of the Romanesque. Uh, pretty plain facades, actually. I mean, we have decorative work around the uh, portals. We have what will later become known as uh, the rose window. They'll actually be round, round for a lot of churches. Um, and some statuary occasionally, but still pretty plain looking. We have arches, but they're very round. In the Gothic, you'll see those starting to elongate. But everything's pretty gently rounded and you can see that's all the light that comes in so it would be very dark on the inside and really not much of anything going along um, the sides there. Um, some windows up here at the top of the clear story but down below no light would be coming in at all. Uh, let's look inside of another church. This one looks a little better lit. Um, we have this, this uh, apse at the end here. Remember the apse is that rounded portion that comes out at the end of the basilica floor plan, of course, taken from Greece, the temple, and then the Romans uh, kind of adopted that floor plan of the temple and made it bigger for their law basilicas and their public places. And then um, the medieval church appropriated that basilica floor plan to use it for a place where congregations could meet inside. So it's gone through these changes. And that rounded area on the outside, that apse, is where, uh, so we're facing where the altar, the main altar. Churches had lots of side altars. You can see the, a glimpse of one here. Little half round places on the, um, the, the sides of the basilica where there would be little chapels. So we do have some light coming in from there. And again, up here from the clear story. But again, um, if you're sitting over here, you're not gonna be able to see down the front. Or if you're sitting on this side, you're not gonna be able to see down the front, just if you're sitting in this um, central nave. And you notice that um, there wouldn't have been built-in seating like you see in churches today. Um, it would have just been open space and um, people would have stood or you know, maybe had some, some seating for certain po uh, populations, but um, it wasn't really designed for a long um, sitting sort of thing. Let's go back um, to um, well, um, I don't want to hop around a little bit, but let's let's talk about some of the carvings. You see again inside here, it's very, very plain. We do have some of the painting along the arches there, but we see some decorative work in the carvings here of the capitals. You can see up there and there. Let's look closer at some of those capitals. Um, we have these carvings on an outside walkway here, and we see kind of bird, bird-like figures, like maybe eagles and some open fretwork. Um, just sort of, that's where we have most of our stone carving. We get a lot of this flat kind of carving. This is a niche somewhere under, uh, either inside or outside, I don't remember where. Um, but it's not very high relief, it's very low relief. Um, an image of Christ and four um, evangelists of the, the gospel with their, their uh, associated um, animal, in this case a man. And we have Christ encircled here in a mandorla. You heard that in the other video you watched, kind of like a full body halo. Not terribly um, realistic looking figures. We're starting to get some of the, the, the drapery again that's been missing for a while, um, but not, not a terribly realistic 
portrayal of human human figure. Again, more carving here. You have the um, drapery, but very symmetrical, very artificial looking. The people are um, really just symbols of who they are. This is Adam and Eve, of course. Um, we have the serpent over here. But again, not a lot of physical detail that looks all that realistic. Um, we get a little more realism later, but in this next slide, this is one of the things that you need to be aware of. This is the what we call a portal, right? Those of you who play the, the, the game Portal, you know what we're talking about, an entrance into the churchway. So you could stand out, stand here out of the, um, of the elements, but, and sometimes there are doors right here as well, different, different portals are done different ways. But what you have is a massive doorway, and this area up here is called the tympanum. Um, and they'll often be carved, and you see one in the video the, of the um, temple of I mean, the, the church of Aton, um, and the, the Khan Academy video walks you through all the elements. Um, basically, storytelling, right? So we have carving everywhere along the lintel, on the the, the door jams here, on the archivolts, each individual voussoir, and here on the trumeau. All right. Let's look at those words in context. So here's an example of this Romanesque portal. The jams, the archivolts as they go around here, and these archivolts are made up of individual voussoirs. And that's the same word we used for putting the keystone um, in the arches, right? Back in, um, in Rome, we, we looked at the, that kind of a, a drawing before of, of an arch. So these individual voussoirs are often carved. The jams are carved in different ways. The lintel, right? Remember the old post and lintel design? Well, they still call this the lintel. It's carved. And the trumeau, that piece in the middle that, again, there's usually a door on each side of it. So these all have carving. So you'll need to be able to identify these different features of a Romanesque portal. In other decorative arts, we're beginning to see not just the low relief carvings, but carved figures, this one's in a niche, um, that are not quite in the round yet. We can't walk all the way around it, but uh, definitely more 3D, right? So not just the flat carvings. We're beginning to see some statuary of people where um, they're looking like they're actually standing there. We're seeing some bronze work, right? Beautiful. Um, work on, on this bronze, I don't know if it's a baptismal font or, or, or what it might be. Wood carving. And these last two images, this and the next one, are examples of what we call reliquaries. And in the material this week and also in the video, um, you learn about the cult of, uh, of relics and the pilgrimages that go from church to church, viewing these relics and how that changed. Um, the economy in some way of these church towns and also the um, physical design of the churches so that they could, so these people could come and visit and see the rel relics without disturbing the um, church services with that ambulatory that goes back be behind the apse where the um, relics would have been housed. Well, the relics were stored in these items called reliquaries and often reliquaries were in the shape of the part, body part that was in there, but not always. This is a reliquary, and you can see that the head pops off and there would have been um, ashes or bones or fingernails or a piece of cloth, whatever was from that particular saint. We also have this final one here of, um, there, I believe someone's head or skull is actually in this reliquary, very beautiful object. So there was quite a, um, market for these beautiful um, reliquaries that would hold the um, bits and pieces of the saints that people would come um, to worship.